Welcome, new to Mindful Tech Head here. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the Acer Power S series APSE2A, a computer that you may have seen presented in the somewhat silly uh, camera test that I did the other day. So uh, I know I know it turns on. Uh, I have done that before, uh, but we will show that to you now and then we will have a bit of a deeper dive into the hardware and see what we're actually dealing with. So this is an early model uh, of the Acer Power S series of desktop computers. So the E2A as it was known. Uh, this series was later uh, superseded by the somewhat easier to pronounce Acer Aspire series, uh, a series of desktops and laptops that is still running to this day. Obviously this is a Windows 98 machine, so we'll be taking a little look at Windows 98 uh, and testing the various components and seeing what's going on with it. So while we obviously boot, I've yet to test anything else. And one of the first things I noticed is that it's not making any sound as we boot it up, which is a shame because that Windows 98 startup sound though. Uh, it seems that whatever this aftermarket speaker that's been attached here in the front bay is not actually functional, but uh, that's something we can fix. So, first things first, we need to get this machine ready to accept a modern USB drive, uh, which is actually relatively easy with Windows 98. I can also uh, test the CD drive while I do so, as I have on a CD, the USB mass storage driver. We'll pop in the drive. And then once that's done, we can install various utilities from my USB stick, uh, like CPU Z or Z, I guess, if we're being more English. Uh, and we'll, uh, we'll take a bit of a deeper dive into what's actually in this machine and hopefully uh, be able to carbon date it a little better by looking at what Celeron we're actually running in this machine. Because at the moment, I'm not entirely sure of the release year of this machine. There's very little information about it on the internet. So. You know, this is just, this is just a, an archaeological service that we're providing here at Mindful of Tech. So we spin up. We have a disk. There we go, installing drivers. Of course, being Windows 98, we are almost certainly going to be asked to restart. Or at least we would be. This wasn't the trickery of YouTube, and I have actually already installed this. Never mind. So, with that installed, we can stick a USB stick in, which is over there. Pop this safely away in my... Currently only populated by one CD, CD carrier. Now again, due to its age, one thing that we don't have on this machine is any kind of front USB port. So we're going to have to climb around the back and stick it in one of the slots back there. This by eye, by touch rather. Oh man, front USB ports were a good invention. So there we are, that's in. Now again, I, I do know this works, I have booted up before, but we uh, had a bit of a problem with my camera running out of space, so the video has begun again. We can see on this drive, I have various utilities, including CPU Z. Ah, it doesn't run on this version of Windows. Which is weird because I'm sure it does. Maybe I need the installer version. Let's have a look. So yeah, I'll stop the video for a second, and uh, we'll find a version that hopefully works. Okay, so we're back with hopefully an installable version. Of CPU Z. No, not supported. Um, okay, let's go and find an old version that will work with Windows 98. Oh. Poo. Okay, 
So, now that we've recovered the uh, USB stick from the back of the desk, I really wish I had a front port, uh, I found a version of CPUZ that should run uh, in the uh, power supply founder. Uh, it seems that the, the previous version of, uh, the latest version rather, of CPUZ uh, doesn't support Windows 98. And the previous one does through a special executable. CPU 98. Hey, look at that. So now we can get a look at the guts of this thing and figure out what we're really dealing with. So we have an Intel Ceron Medocino clocked 533. Oh, that should be about 700, but I uh, don't know if they undervolt and things in those days. They may have done. Uh, we also have some sort of motherboard made by SIS, uh, who have annoyed me on multiple occasions actually with older machines. Uh, the SIS chipset and the graphics chipset and things is very widely unsupported. I've had a lot of fun trying to get Linux to play ball with. Uh, such insulation. We have a grand total of 184 megabytes of RAM with absolutely no information about frequency, type, etc. Uh, DDR1, I assume. We'll get a better look at that when we open it up in the next video. Um, graphics, yeah, again, the SIS 530 we have here. Uh, I think that is the specific one that was giving me a lot of trouble on an old laptop that I'm currently running Vista on because I gave up trying to find drivers for Linux. We have a single threaded CPU, I guess. I'll have to look that up. So this Medocin Men Mendocino uh, code name here should, if I have a quick Google, allow me to be a bit more specific about the year that this machine actually was put together. So let's take a little look. Oh, it's 1998, so it is probably the oldest of the Acer Aspire, I'm oh, sorry, Acer Power S series of desktops uh, running Windows 98. So this would have been running original Windows 98 uh, and has probably been updated to SE since. We've got design for NT and 98 on the front here. And I do have a second edition product key. So I guess that was updated at May Gurney or wherever this thing came from originally, which is good because that means I've got a Windows 98 legit product key which is always nice to have so all in all this machine is not great um, we'll have a little look at what it can do we'll see whether or not we can actually even run any benchmarks on it in just a moment or two uh, but it will be a great project obviously it needs needs a good clean um, you can probably see that even from this distance but the uh, the keyboard is quite gunked up the mouse needs a good clean uh, all of this case and we'll give the monitor a clean I'm not going to open it up because CRT scare me, but uh, we'll certainly give it a clean and see how we go with it. Uh, so other than the, the sound not working, uh, the floppy drive has yet to be tested. I do have some cover discs which came with this machine, which will not only be a treasure trove of old technology, but should allow us to test the drive. Let's have a little look. Maybe that XCOM, Terror from the Deep. Let's chuck that in and uh, see whether or not it reads. Junk. Hey. Okay, so seem to be able to read files, find, install this. Oh, directory already exists. Must be previously installed on here. I haven't actually really had a look around this machine. It came from a. Uh, a house clearing that my brother was doing, so I knew it was working because I've been sent a picture of it booting. Um, but I guess whoever had it before, oh yeah, has installed some stuff. <laughs> some stuff from these cover discs by the look of it. So we won't bother overwriting that. I think we can safely say that the uh, floppy drive is working. Which is good to know. So finally, I guess we should uh, 
test the blistering gaming performance of this machine, we will attempt to install 3D Mark 2000, I guess. Even that's probably a little new, but uh, let's see what happens. Do I actually have an older version of 3D Mark? No, so 2001 I have here. Eh, see what it does. USB 1, I assume, from the speed, or perhaps I'm just misremembering the speed of USB 2. No, I mean, not yet, that's, that's got to be USB 1. This is probably going to be a lot of effort for nothing because I very much doubt this graphics chip is going to support any of the features of this card, of uh, this benchmark rather, uh, maybe hopefully one or two. Uh, otherwise, we'll chuck 3D Mark 2000 on there and see if we get any luck with that. <laughs> In order to run, we need DirectX 8 or newer. So, do we support that? I guess there's only one way to find out. I will go and chuck DirectX 8 on here and we'll see what we're doing. I'll also get 3D Mark 2000 while I'm at it as well, so uh, be right back. Okay, so, obviously Windows was not happy that I pulled the USB stick out there without giving it time to get ready, so... Okay, good. Pop it back in. We now have, hopefully, a DirectX that will install. According to the Microsoft website, this is a supported version of Windows. We also have 3D Mark 2000 and 3D Mark 1999, which I don't believe I've ever actually run. So I think we might try that one first, that'll be good fun. So, DirectX, can we install it? Can't even create a new folder in the uh, in the browse window here. <laughs> yeah, it's exciting viewing, isn't it? Just leave this in, completely unedited. Computing was certainly more mindful back in the day. A lot of time to, to ponder. Which is why it's better now, because I barely have to think about anything for like five seconds before I'm on the desktop. So. I guess I might as well utilise the time while that's installing and we'll take a nice screenshot of that. Oh wow, yeah, no, you can't, you can't type on the start menu. Oh dear. Uh, paint. There it is. Largely unchanged. I mean, I think more recently, like Windows 10 Paint has actually had an update, but this was basically what we were running for all those years. Oh, we also noticed that this screen is Absolutely off center. Nah, can't do it. I'm not sure if we finished DirectX. Hopefully, we did. Oh man. Okay, so, okay. I accept. Wow, it just works. Some good backwards compatibility from Microsoft there. It's a shame that more devices aren't supported with uh, legacy options these days. It's a subject for another video, I think. Okay. Of course, we need to restart our machine. See, people think machines restart a lot these days, but there was nothing compared to how it was back then. Control Alt Escape to get into setup. Wow. That's a convoluted way of saying delete. Let's go all the way back to 3D Mark 2000, uh, 2009. Uh, 1999. Well, that's probably going to be the, the fairest 
graphical benchmark that we can perform on this machine. Um, I, I have no idea how it runs, though, as I've not seen it before, so I don't really have a point of comparison, but I'm pretty sure all versions of 3D Mark are going to run appallingly on this machine, um, but hopefully we'll be able to run them a bit. 3D Mark 99 Mac. We need a username, which I believe is uh... Oh, I didn't save it. Really good. Genius! Hey, registered. Congratulations. I not want to read me. I want to run. Three more. Ninety-nine. Max. <laughs> wow. Okay, so we don't have DirectX six either. Well, that pretty much. That pretty much kills the video then. Um, let's see whether or not 2001. I keep wanting to type when I go into the start menu. It's second nature now, but I did it just straight out. I'll forget it. So anyway, we're not going to run any benchmarks on this thing. Um, I do have a modest graphics upgrade that we can probably chuck in there and actually get it to uh, to at least benchmark. But as it is now, you can see this is a relatively untouched from its day of birth Windows 98 machine from Acer, uh, an old work computer I assume that someone took home, it's got uh, the old and my battery. Okay, welcome back. Uh, so we are now a few days hence of the video that you just saw, the majority of the editing work has been done and this video is going to get uploaded today, so that was pretty cool. Um, some things that we learned in this, my first proper video I guess, uh, certainly the first thing I've done for YouTube for a long time. A um, few things obviously we could improve on. Um, I want to try and figure out how to fix the, the roll that we're getting from the CRT here. may not be possible on the camera that uh, I'm using, but hopefully that will improve. Uh, also, the, the frame rate of some of the Windows 98 capture was, was a bit low. Uh, I am trying to find some screen recording software for Windows 98 that will do it a little bit better. Um, I also, as you may have seen, now have a clapperboard. A cheap 99p free shipping clapperboard all the way from China. As you would have also seen, it did arrive broken. Um, but that's okay, because I only really need this bit. So now I won't have to clap in order to sync up my audio. Uh, and that's about it, really. Uh, as far as this machine goes, we're going to be doing some more videos. Um, I do, as I said, have a modest graphics upgrade, which should allow us to run some benchmarks on it and turn it into a bit more of a, uh, a gaming machine from the era. Um, so it's not going to be, you know, by any means a performance machine, but it should be able to become my dedicated Windows 98 gaming rig. It should be quite good fun. Um, I've also got uh, an upgrade of my main computer coming as well, and I'm considering making a video about how I make videos um, using the various bits of technology and things that I had lying around uh, that I started this channel with, so if that's the kind of thing you'd be interested in, then please do like this video, subscribe. Uh, if you didn't like this video, there's a button for that too. And if you want to talk about it, come and find me on Mastodon, uh, at mindfulofttech, at wandering.shop. So, um, I don't know how frequently I'm going to be uploading videos, don't really know, you know kind of where we're going from here, but uh, hopefully there'll be some new stuff appearing uh, in the next few days, weeks, however, however it works out. Um, but uh, I'll see you again next time. Thanks for coming. Be well. Alright, Dave.